Thank you for staying with us. Let's add the show on the right on a light note. Man, you Villarreal, did they? Man, you failed to, 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 show, to turn off for that UEFA Cup. Uh, it's better to just leave me alone. I'm still mourning. <laughs> I'm still mourning. You guys fell out the uh, Champions League. I've stayed away from Facebook until further uh, notice because there are some of your friends. wicked individuals there. <laughs> Their own clubs cannot achieve anything. So they are always uh, eager to see other clubs fail, especially the Arsenal supporters, the long-suffering Arsenal supporters. You know, they are the ones who are harassing us, and some of them, two Chelsea supporters, who have given up that they cannot win the Champions League, they are now harassing me on Facebook. Are you so satisfied? I've with left the Ole place. Ole's performance yesterday. Ole showed managerial cowardice, and he's a disgrace, really. If you are a coach, you do not have the lever to remove a player who is clearly fumbling. Rashford was not in the game. Mm. Even a blind man would know that Rashford was not in the game. He should have removed him. But he left him there, hoping that there will be one moment of brilliance from Rashford. But on a day that is not your day, it is not your day. There's nothing you can do. Every foot you take, you put wrong. Look at the pass that uh, um, uh, Bruno Fernandes gave him. Even my 12-year-old boy would easily slot that ball into the net. But Rashford was just like a curse to man you, oh, and God. you left him. <laughs> now, another thing, the, when the penalties, I was surprised when a match that Manchester United dominated for so long, yet you failed to win. You are now waiting for penalties. You started bringing in people like you are mad at people who can play penalties. No, during that extra time, mm. should have been the time to win it. Mm. Now, you left uh, David De Gea. David De Gea is useless when it comes to stopping penalties. He used to be the with, only used time, to be your best no, time. No, no, penalties, <laughs> penalties. The only time he saved the penalty in more than 10 years at Manchester United was during a precision friendly. That was the only time. Precision friendly. If you want to, I, I can score a penalty or even many penalties against the hair because he will not even go for it. And if he goes for it, he will go tamely for it. You know, that's the person that the coach left on the field. Yeah, look, you are so passionate so that about coach, it. <laughs> that same coach. Manchester United, unless they remove, unless they find the courage, they should forget about the fact that he's a Manchester United legend. After all, Chelsea sacked Lampard, who is their the legend. Mm. As long as he's coach, he would never win anything for Manu because he would not find the courage to take the big decisions. Mm -hmm. Big coaches know when to remove players. Okay, okay. You know? Let's come back to our country today. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one who provoked me. You provoked me. <laughs> All right, as Nigeria continues to mourn its 21st Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Matairu, who died in a plane crash last week, the vacuum created by his death is about to be filled. President Mohamed Bari has appointed Major General Farouk Yahya as the new Chief of Army Staff. Before his new appointment, Major General Yahya was the General Officer Commanding One Division of the Nigerian Army and the Incumbent Theatre Commander of Operation Hadikai. Meanwhile, the news of his appointment has the, uh, as Army Chief caused wild jubilation among troops of Operation Hadikai. Let's share the video with you. Don't be carried away, lift it up. Your happiness, which has been registered, the course is standing right before you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you retire back to our beat. There is going to be a special moment that will be organized. Yes, sir. That will have this special celebration for the gift of God. Again, on behalf of the Coas, I wish to encourage each and individual of us to go back, you yourself, your family, your people back home, to submit the new Coas in the hands of God. <laughs> for Allah's guidance, Amen. direction, Amen. and his protection. Yeah. 
you have cause to jubilate, to celebrate at the end of your stand-up. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Listen to God. We'll bring this to an end. Amen. So we'll go back to our normal place. Our commitment and dedication. We can do it. So thank you so very much for everything. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for everything. Major General Farouk Yahya, former GAC, one division, and theater commander of Operation Adin K. Adin K. Yes. Okay, it used to be Operation Lafayette Dole. Yes. Julie, this is a combatant officer. This yes. is somebody that is truly, truly on yes. the field. Yes. And an operations man. Yes, for Trump him to be a GOC and commander of that kind of critical, the most critical operation in Nigeria right now is that Adin K. Yes, the, the, the president has. Uh, been consistent in appointing people who have served at Operation Lafayette Dole, as it used to be known, um, at, in Maiduguri generally. He's, he's been appointing them as service chiefs. The current chief of air staff was at one time the air component commander hmm. of Operation Lafayette Dole. Hmm. The, um, chief of Naval Staff was also in charge for the Navy at Operation Lafayette Dole. Now we've seen the president appoint straight from the theater oh, command. Mm. He made yeah, yeah, uh, chief of Army Staff. Remember that even at Tahiru was one time commander of Operation Lafayette Dole. And he did very well there, contrary to what some people will say. If you go back to history, you see that in terms of loss of troops, loss of men and equipment, Atahiru did very well. I rate him very high because during his time, we didn't lose so many troops as is now common mm. uh, we, we, uh, in that theater command. So he moved from there, became um, chief of our minister. So the president is appointing people who have experience because the bulk of the war, even our war um, spending and infrastructure, military infrastructure, is concentrated in the Northeast. Mm. So he's been appointing people who have um, knowledge, who have experience, who have seen it, you know, seen uh, what it looks like. And mm. I think it's a good um, um, decision. And this is a very popular officer, which is, which is uh, officers and men, because mm. um, a lot of soldiers have called me today to say they are happy mm. with this appointment. And it's significant because Atahiro, the late Atahiro, left him left him on that position. That says something about him. That says something about him. You mm. know, when we, when we look at the whole thing, Atairu came in and made more than 100 appointments. Yes. But he left him there. Overhauled. Yes, he left him there. Though it was Burate that appointed, appointed him. him. He left him there. That it must have been for a reason. Yes. They've spoken about his hard work. They've spoken about his, the respect that uh, oh, tro troops have for him. And for somebody who has a master's in uh, human uh, resource management, mm. it is not surprising that he's, uh, he, he has come to embody that in the way he relates with uh, his troops. I wish him uh, success um, in, the, in the days to come. And I really hope that he can continue from where um, General Tahiru stopped. You see, a, a major general is coming at a very, very challenging time in terms of security. And um, General Tahiru had hardly settled down before that plane crash happened and everything. And this person wants to come and clear a lot of um, security challenges we have across the country. 
because that will be his primary responsibility to stabilize the northeast to make sure the bandits have gotten have gotten off those areas that they've turned themselves to um, warlords. Mm -hmm. I congratulate him, really. Congratulations to him for whatever reason. Um, the president must have had a lot of confidence in him. That must have been responsible for his appointment. That being said, I don't envy him at all because it's coming in at a time that um, insecurity, the level of insecurity in the country, particularly in the Northeast, is nothing to write to me about. And it's really come, he's facing a lot of challenges. The challenges are just too many, and he will need to do more than perform to make a, a mark. So I, all I can just <laughs> say is that he needs to double up to actually make an impact that Nigerians will see easily because of the enorm enormous problems that uh, we have on ground right now. You know, it takes more than being a good officer. It takes more than having a good relationship with your troop. It takes a lot much more. We are talking about equipment here. We are talking about uh, military infrastructure. We are talking about so many maximizing the, 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 the things that are available. And so he has to really manage a lot of things to make an impact. Let's say it this way that he really has to eat the grand running mm. to make an impact. And I really wish him the best, particularly at this time. And I just hope that uh, his appointment will bring a lot of uh, relief to Nigerians and an, an improvement in the way we've been fighting this insecurity in this country. Yeah. Baraji, let, let's look at his uh, profile. This is a major general. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a general officer commanded one division, or one division that's um, in yes. Kaduna, that's yeah. a foremost uh, um, division. And the former... Um, Lieutenant General Tairu mm. had a very, very um, a rich profile. Yes. When, you know, as yes. when he went to the Senate to defend his system. So we want to know about this Major General Yahya Farouk. Yes, um, Major General Yahya Farouk was born on January 5th, 1966, meaning that he's older than the uh, former, the middle past of Army staff. They were born the same year, but older than him. Born in uh, Sifa, in Bodinga, local government of Sokoto State, but is actually from Zamfara State. And he began his uh, cadet training on the 27th of September 1985 and was commissioned into the Nigerian Army Infantry Corps on 22nd September 1990. Uh, he is of the regular Corps 37. He was Deputy Director, Army Headquarters. Department of, uh, uh, and it was military secretary. Um, it was garrison commander headquarters, guards brigade. It was deputy director army research and development, director of manpower at the army headquarters, and um, GOC one division as we said before. It was chief of staff headquarters, joint task force operation Pulo Shield and directing staff at the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, which means uh, he's also been involved in training of um, officers, you know. So he's, um, he's had a distinguished career. Mm -hmm. When you rise to the rank of a major general, you, you've literally reached the peak because you can be appointed as a chief of army staff. It's, um, and once you're appointed, is cost 37. Yes. Now effectively, people um, in 36. That's the implication. It's, it's a very grim implication that um, I personally don't like to hmm. even um, consider. But it's a, it's a normal thing. Those we had that's about three normal. officers or so, um, cost uh, 35 cost mates of the former chief of army staff. They will all now live. I, say, I had no true 
one of the best of the best who, who was um, the army um, head of policy and plans who will have to go um, Saram who will have to go then cost 36 to a lot of the, the, the guys on cost 36 are not his mates regular cost 36 not his mates they will all leave his own mates his own cost mates only a few of them will be retained mm. maybe five it's comfortable with them maybe five in some cases they don't even get retained at all mm. so maybe about five of them if he strongly recommends that they can work with them those few soldiers will be retained so now at the last count more than 30 generals um, are going to be retired and that's it generous. also means that it also means that a lot of the appointments that General Tahiru made hmm. the day after he was decorated with his rank of Lieutenant General, a lot of those appointments will now be um, shuffled. Yes, they, a lot of them will even now will leave. by the recorded reality will have left because they will leave because he appointed a lot of people on course 36, hmm. you know, like the DG of DICOM. He was 35. Yes, the chief of former chief of Amistad was 35. So he appointed a lot of 36 because they were the next to, to them. He appointed a lot of them into critical positions. Now with somebody coming uh, from course 37, it means that the those appointees will be relieved of their positions this the new man will now have to appoint new people so i won't be surprised if general yaya too makes uh, between 50 to 100 uh, appointments uh, and posts hmm. within the army wow. it's a it's um, a terrible reality hmm. that um, once a new Presentation. that was why i i was hoping that we could just look at the current army hierarchy and pick one of From those three, three uh, yeah. yes. But the president saw things differently and picked someone way junior to them. And the implication of that is that cost 36, they will leave. The remaining cost 35 will leave. The bulk of cost 37, where uh, it comes from, will also leave. Uh, okay. That's the reality. I have Olushola. On the line. Thank you for joining good us. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Shola. Uh, Baba Jide, Olade, good evening, sir. And the madam at your left hand side. Now, uh, that is a very good thing from Mr. President, giving us a man that understands the rudiments of the work as a new chief of army staff. That's very good. And uh, honestly, this man has an enormous job to perform. Why? Because of the challenges in our hands now. But I want to believe that he's going to perform as the late Atairu that just died last week, uh, Friday. Because I can see the jubilation that he has been given by his men in the place he's working now. That shows that he's having a very good rapport with those men. And I want to appreciate him for that. And I would like him to continue so that these men, their morale will be boosted and be able to do the needful for us as Nigeria. There's one conviction I have in my spirit. Peace will still, will still come to this country, Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you very much. Beautiful mm. I think, busy. I think with his appointment from the theater, as a theater commander to the chief of army staff now, we understand what these guys need. Mm. We understand what they are facing. Mm. We understand the, the shortcomings. So as the chief of army staff, we'll be able to deploy resources to make sure that we face the war against this insurgency frontally. Yeah, you know, the other time I told you that um, um, all the things that go for him, as good as they are, there are certain limitations. It's good that he understands he's coming from the war front, which will make him to understand the problems more than somebody that is just coming from the other side, maybe the administrative side. Now, 
it's also good that you will be able to talk to the troops, just like the last video of late Atahiru that we saw, where he was actually addressing the troops and telling them that uh, he understood their problems, that he was going to lead from the front and all of that. I also expect the new man to do the same thing, having been a man of war, so to say, from his youth, let me put it that way, the mm. way the Bible described uh, mm. <laughs> David. Mm. Now, and An infantry I, yes, I also <laughs> believe that he will know where the shoe pinches really, mm. because he's, he understands, he's, he's been there. He's mm. been there, he has gone through things. He knows we, what is lacking. But at the same time, in spite of his knowledge and all of that, he needs the cooperation of the government to mm. actually succeed. Because even <coughs> if he understands all the problems, he's not going to be able to solve them by himself. For, rest, for instance, in the area of equipment, he could be able to identify the equipment that is required, but he doesn't have the power to buy them. He may identify, he may be able to boost the morale of the soldiers, you get it, but then there is also a limit to what he can do. So that is why at this point in time, everybody needs to cooperate with him in order to achieve the kind of safety, security that every one of us is interested in as Nigerian citizens. So it's not just for him alone. We shouldn't just put all the responsibility, all the burden on him. And we should not just assume that if he fails, if there is any form of failure, that it is because of him. Because it is not just one factor. A lot of things are going to work together for us to be, for him to be able to succeed in this responsibility. But when you can get the job done, what should we expect? Uh, what should we expect from him? Yes, um, as someone who has um, commanded at the highest level, I as someone who has been an operations man, an infantry officer, I expected that an infantry officer will be made the uh, chief of army staff, and that's what has happened. So he has um, tremendous experience. He has tremendous goodwill uh, going for him, and you would expect that if he gets the cooperation of everyone, he will succeed. One thing that gladdens me is the fact that the um, both all of the services are working together at this time. Uh, the Navy, the Air Force, um, the Chief of Defense Staff is taking charge. That was not yeah. the case during mm. the when we had Bura, yes, mm. because the current crop of service chiefs respect him, yes. and they are the now operations are conducted with the knowledge and approval of the defense headquarters. Mm. You know, I've said before that all joint operations are under the command of the chief of defense staff. We are going to see a lot of joint operations by our armed forces under the command of the chief of defense staff who had also been theater commander at Operation Lafayette Dole, who had also been the commander of the joint uh, um, uh, multinational joint tax force with headquarters in, in Jamena. So I am positive that we will be able to um, uh, achieve much, but we must also not deceive ourselves that things are rosy. No, things are not rosy. And even the killing of Shekau portends great danger, and I will explain. The Albanawi faction of, Bo of Boko Haram, now known as ISWAP, had always wanted to 
take control of Sambisa because Sambisa is big. They were not in Sambisa. They were in other areas outside of Sambisa, the fringes of uh, Lake the, the, the Lake Chad, the islands of Lake Chad. They maintain a, a strong presence there. The Timbuktu Triangle, Gorigi, um, uh, Alagarno, all of those forests there. They, they, they stayed there uh, laying ambush for our troops and all that. Now, if they are able to move into Sambisa, it offers greater protection for them because it's such an expansive forest. 6.5% uh, of the Nigerian um, uh, 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 landscape. So it means it may be more difficult to track them Hmm. in Sambisa than even Timbuktu Triangle. The ground, there are tunnels hmm. there. Some of the tunnels were not even built by them because uh, during the Abacha era, we were using that place as a hmm. training facility for the, for the uh, uh, strike force that he used at that time for the BGs. So the, they are now exploiting uh, those tunnels uh, to hide from uh, area yeah, bombardment yes. and all that. So they've always wanted that place. And having taken Shekau out of the picture, having arrested Shekau's commanders, a good number of the dozens of Shekau's commanders, they've rounded them up. It means that they have found a place where they can hide. And from, from inside Sambisa, they can also launch attacks um, and uh, ambushes, especially on our troops, especially in the Dambua area, all of those places. So I, um, I know that there's still a lot of work to do. And for this general, he should know that, look, there's so much work to do. Uh, and he has to motivate the troops to deliver the goods. And the National Assembly and all concerned must also do their best to provide all that the army needs in terms of welfare, in terms of top grade equipment that they need, game changers that they need to win this war for us. All right, we'll take this break. We'll be back after this time out. Stay with us. It's journalist hangouts. Uh, we're still looking at the appointment of a new chief of army staff, BC. So we're talking about the challenges and everything. Talking in terms of um, welfare, we know that people even at the forefront, as the operation Lafayette, former operation Lafayette Dole, soldiers, other ranks, they do still complain about the allowances not being paid as a one deal. And a lot of Nigerians feel that this should not continue at all. That it should be prioritized in terms yeah. of their welfare. You can just demand. Even the uh, Bible says that you cannot send somebody to the war front without providing the weapons of warfare. If you send somebody, it's like you just send these soldiers to go and die. And you know that we've had cases of soldiers actually running away. We have so many cases of that, as in as much as we would like to hide this negative uh, information, but we still get to hear them one way or the other. And we also see some videos, uh, viral videos, where these soldiers complain about not even having access to water to drink. Water, as simple as water is. And... Um, you see a lot of them complain. And unfortunately, this complaint has been going on for years. And you just wonder, why do we keep our troops in the war front or on the war front, deny, depriving them of the basic amenities of life? Mm. And we are still expecting these people to do miracles. If we want to be sincere with ourselves, these are the people that are out there all the time. When we are sleeping, they are not sleeping. Whatever attack on us, they are the ones there. We expect them to perform miracles. 
the simplest thing that we can just do is to pay these people and to take care of their welfare. So going forward, I will expect even the National Assembly, if it means passing a law to prioritize the welfare of the military, particularly these troops, it is not too much. Okay. And I also think as Nigerians, we should just keep on talking so that these people will be, because I can't even imagine it. It's, so, it's, so, it's something that you don't even want to think or talk about. I have Sadiq on the line. Thank you for joining us, Sadiq. Yeah, this is Sadiq Amali from Duse Jigawa State. Mm. Go ahead, please. So, oh, okay. So, I just want to thank uh, Baba Jidi and the other lady for a good analysis of, uh, on insurgency in the Northeast. But what I would like uh, Baba Jidi to do is to make sure he advise the new chief of army staff that if you hold on to the operational tactics, or maybe the name called Operation Hiding K, which, which suggests a, a synergy between the armed forces. Uh, I'm not sure if General Burati used the Nigerian Air Force fleet in the in this entire period as chief of army staff. So what General Tariq tried to bring was to bring the synergy between the, the armed forces. So I would like Baba Jide to advise the chief of army staff and other people concerned that that synergy that Atahiru brought should be held on. And maybe we can win. This, uh, Thank you very much. It's a significant um, observation by him because the former service chiefs at a point were not working together. Um, they were not even praying in the same mosque. So how do you expect progress? And when uh, we were saying that uh, it was time to let them go. Have noticed, somebody should have noticed that. And that no, they, not, they, they, there's no way they will say they did not notice. There's no way, if I can be here and I got to know. So do, were they not being uh, oversighted by some people? Would they say they didn't know? They do not see the national security advisor go to the Senate to say that service chiefs were not taking instructions from him? Mm. Even the former chief of defense staff said the same thing. Mm. So, which is like saying we had service chiefs who were already seeing themselves as bigger than everybody. They were working independently. And you know, they were thinking from different handbooks. So how will you achieve result? And that's, the, that's what that color, that's the point that that color was making. You have to, you are one fighting group. One fighting group. Understood. And you should work together. When you bring personality, ego and all that into it. That was why things degenerated yeah, under them. Guys. And that was why we were pushing that the president had no reason to keep them to stay that long when we were not getting results. Things degenerated rapidly under them because at a point they were clearly not working together. They were not on talking terms. Hmm. But the good thing is that under Irabo now, such things are not happening. Atahiro got tremendous support from, uh, from Irabo. Irabo is someone that, if you know him, is a perfect gentleman, an officer, it's yes. Charisma, uh, yeah. courage. See, the day they were appointed, I called him. The phone didn't ring twice. He picked it. I wanted to congratulate him. The phone didn't ring twice. Hmm. He picked the same day. The same day. So to tell you that, look, he's a man who, who has an open door policy, and he commands the respect of other service chiefs. Now they realize that, look, let us put ego aside. Mm. We, are, we are not interested in, in, in your ego. This is about Nigeria. Sure People are dying. Time, Let's work together. You listening to General Alon Shaki. No, that's the point that I made. I said for them, NSA, who is supposed to coordinate national security, he went to this same NSA. Mm. Probably the, the, the best red NSA that Nigeria has produced, mm. you know, the PhD and all. He went to the National Assembly to say, these people don't take my advice. Yet the law permits him to coordinate. At a point, some of them were working directly with Abakiari, the later Abakiari. If they wanted anything, they would go over mm. Monguno's mm. head, mm. straight to Abakiari, the later Abakiari, to get what they wanted. A sort of dysfunctional system. Mm. We can have that. 
You can't have that. If I were the president, I would direct Tell you straight to where you... And so, uh, so did we win the war? With, and look at what how much we have expended on that war. Did we win the war? Yet some people didn't want the service chiefs to go with all of the dysfunctional realities that we were facing. They said, no, they should stay, they should stay. Hmm. Okay, I have another caller. Hello? Hello? Peter? Yes? All right, go ahead with your contribution, please. Hello? Yes, we Peter, can hear you. Go we ahead with your contribution. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Baba DJ. Thank you for your contribution. We are very happy for what is going on. It. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes clearly. I can are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. Hear. just keep talking. Okay, thank you, Baba DJ and the presenter. God will bless you for your contribution you have been making in this country. Amen. You are a very wonderful person. Yes, I'm hearing you. Hello? Peter, you're listening to yourself. Peter, keep talking. Just keep talking. God well, we bless you for your contribution. Amen, your amen. On this TV. Yes, we pray that the, 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 the new service man should be very proactive and you work perfectly. Mm. Hello? All right. Uh, we have to move on. Time is fast spent. <laughs> now, after endless waiting by citizens on the rising insecurity across Nigeria, there is now lamentation from the Olympus Heights to tell us that there is fire on the mountain. President Mahmoud Bouhari said the wave of attacks is threatening the country's existence and hampering its development plans. In the face of this, bandits killed 21 vigilantes and a village head in Rabah and Sabon Bini, local government areas of Sokoto states. Things are gradually getting to a worrisome level in Abuja as government abducted two people from their houses in Kubwa area. <laughs> uh, see. You know, they've been talking about this Abuja since like two, three weeks ago. That there's this scare in Abuja that look at any point in time these people might strike. They started mm -hmm. from the National Assembly, started you know, and uh, some critical government infrastructure. The point is they've been striking, just that they've not st struck at uh, government uh, facilities. But individuals in the federal capital territory have been going through some kind of a hell. We've had cases of. Uh, people being kidnapped, even in their homes. Just uh, three days ago, I, uh, one of the, one, somebody who is close to one of my children was the family, two of them were kidnapped in Abuja. And uh, so now people go to steal human beings as if they are going to steal goods and property. In it's fact, merchandise. We, <laughs> yes, it's my, <laughs> we have, we, instead of having armed robbers now, we have uh, kidnappers, uh, you know. Bomo, bomo. <laughs> bomo, bomo. They just go, they, they, so they've been stealing people and they've been getting a uh, bountiful ransom on these people. So the problem has been in Abuja, it has been in the federal capital territory. What these people are just talking about is an attack, a major attack, hmm. probably on government uh, facilities, which we cannot rule out at this stage because I, I have not seen us taking any uh, special step or taking any measure that uh, shows that uh, we actually understand the enormity of this problem or that we are confronting it. Going back to the president's uh, lamentation, mm. I, want to, I don't want to say that uh, the president has finally joined a group of whalers like his SSA would tell us, mm. because you nickname people whalers. Yes, mm. they mm. yes mm. because Special when person. each time people complained, they say we are whalers. Now that the president himself He's is now whaling, so. so I don't know. What will additional? Say? I don't know what additional is going to say at this point in time. And the shows, president himself has joined. Yeah, because the president <laughs> himself has joined the group of whalers <laughs> in Nigeria now, and just to show you how serious the problem is mm. and uh, i look at the president's speech even where he was willing he was represented by the uh, 
uh, secretary to the federal government, boss, boss Mustafa, mm -hmm. and I picked one thing out of his statement. He was saying we should identify the root causes of the problem. And I asked myself, if at this stage we are still at the point of identifying the root causes of our problems, Yoruba will say, if it takes two, seven years to plan madness, madness. How many years, How many years, years will the person now spend to do the madness? Hmm. So it's really a sad uh, development. But then one good thing is that it is good that the president has finally realized that we have a big problem. No, more and more uh, people in government are realizing it. Mm -hmm. if, the minister of defense, if the Minister of Defense could come out to say we are, we are in crisis, yes. you know? Yes. How did he even describe it? That they use one word to say uh, we are bleeding or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. so, so uh, it has reached a point now that, that nobody President can... Buhari is saying the wave of attack is threatening the country's existence yes. and ampering its developmental plans. Yes, because on some of these places, you can't go and build roads where in no-go areas. There are places, there are places where them. Boko Haram are in control. Hmm. You can't go and build roads there. Those civilians will be kidnapped. Remember, even those who are repairing uh, uh, TCN uh, installations that Boko Haram um, destroyed, they, they kidnapped them. Hmm. You know, so uh, they attack them. So this is the thing. There are places where you can go and give people roads, give people water supply and all that, but you dare not go there. Hmm. There are places in a country that are not safe. That is a fact. Across Bruno North, Communities, more than 95% of the community people are not living in them. So what are we talking Deserted. about? It has reached the point that, look, we can no longer pretend that we have problems. Look at Sokoto. Bandits strike in Sokoto from time to time. A lot of it does not get reported. Yeah. Sabombrini, ISA, that's the local government of uh, the former uh, governor, um, Bafarawa, ISA. Uh, Tureta. Raba. Raba is the bad place of the late Sadawna Amadou Belou. Mm. So Raba was attacked, and it's not the first time. Mm. Raba was attacked, and people were killed. We've been told, somebody in government suggested that our people should not show cowardice, that they should confront yes. these people when they mm. come. Now you are reading that but, uh, vigilantes. More than 20 vigilantes were killed. You want to confront people who have got weapons that even the army itself will be scared Are of. And those vigilantes, they are fortified in terms of traditional... <laughs> traditional well, somebody is pointing uh, an AA at you. Yeah. You want to tell yourself that you are armed. An AA. The impact it will have on your body if it connects. <laughs> it's easier to imagine. You know, people, they are, a lot of them are using AK-49, more sophisticated weapons, mm. GPMG, RPG. RPG. It's not, it's I not don't a, think there's any Ayeta for RPG. Ah, <laughs> it's not even every tank that can survive. <laughs> Currently, uh, the armory of the Nigerian army, mm. the only main battle tank that can stand it is the T-72. Mm. That, that Russian tank. Yes, that, Josh, that Jonathan bought uh, for us during that time. That is the highest main battle tank that we have in our inventory. I challenge any RPG. Yes. That is the but the T fifty five another uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, nobody <laughs> you, you see someone facing you with it, you you you, to, you take to your heels. That is what <laughs> that is the edge that the Hello. That is the reason okay. they fear book, uh, that uh, they fear the charging soldiers because they use it a lot. Hello. George. Hello. Yes, thank you for joining us. Okay, ayo, uh, it's Ada from George. Okay. Uh, Baba Julia and uh, let me see. Uh, say, uh, put us in flow. You know that if the government has been listening to journalists' handouts, we will be where we are today. Honestly, say, I thank God for you for you food. But they don't want it because you're not a special advisor. Then what are we talking about? The new, the new um, um, chief of army staff. I wish him all the best, but I don't envy him. 
All of these are sending all. You know, all of you are sending all. You know, it's just like telling somebody, uh, you know, there and to go and save these people. And it's not like a, a, a suicide squad. Look at the number of vigilantes uh, you are losing, and all the you know get 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 you are You know, because of uh, no equipment. Then the, when Buhari has now joined in the lamentation again. We have to go beyond the book of lamentations, please. Mm -hmm. If we cannot, let, let, there's no point living in denial. Let, what is wrong with seeking assistance? What is wrong with the ranks of What is wrong with the ranks of Willers as well? Now, 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 you got your point. You're talking about uh, the, is it the chief of uh, defense or whoever. Well, you know the one that said we should defend ourselves. How are we going to defend ourselves? The minister ourselves? of defense. But all our boys, all of us, they are just dying in the middle Let him stand in our front. Uh, thank, first. You are that, <laughs> thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. You know, if you allow Nigerians to start venting, <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> people are, are so going through a lot. Yes. They are going through mm. a lot. And uh, see. We're not even talking about economy yet. No. We are talking about insecurity. The Naira, the Naira has been devalued. And um, mm. it, it came to 493 in the parallel market today. Because if you go to... 493. Remove the official... Yes. Yeah, they, 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 removed it. It, they removed it and put 411. There is no way the parallel market... Mm will not respond to that devaluation. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Anytime from now, we should be talking about no, 500. It will, definitely. Mm -hmm. If it can move to 493 Official today, no, in the okay. parallel market, the which is the closest market. to reality, mm -hmm. then that suggests that in the days to come, it can even go beyond the 500. But people are going through a lot. They are going through a lot. And unfortunately, things are not helped by insecurity. Mm -hmm. I think you know, things are not helped. You must... A friend of mine was going to a kitty, and he, because he couldn't buy a flight ticket, he wanted to first go buy tickets to Akure, to Akure and then drive by road. He said the road is so bad, he will still end up spending like two hours back to, I mean, to uh, Adwe Kitty. And then said, so what are you going to do? He said, they bought all the tickets. There's a huge demand now. Hmm. People don't want to travel. People are not ready to be kidnapped by, by um, bandits. So anywhere that they can go, and there is flight. You know, there is now flight even from Abuja to Kasina. Hmm. That was not there before. So hmm. more people now, yes, they will now go to Kano, maybe like one and a half hours, to or two. Two. Good, uh, not so bad road. Hmm. But now there is flight. More and more people are not prepared to travel by road. So my friend, what my friend did, he now got policemen, about six. Mm. You will get a vehicle for them, fuel it, you pay some money. At the end of the day, it makes sense to pay that money than to go and pay ransom. ransom. Because ransom. even that time when you, you are kidnapped, the the yeah, you may even die in their hands. <laughs> If you are not the type who, who can the endure, beat. who can endure, beat you first. Mm -hmm. if you cannot walk fast and they keep moving yes. people from place They'll to place, you. if you, you cannot move fast, they can even shoot you. Hmm. That will be the end. That's what happened to that uh, uh, man who came from uh, the US, the, hmm. the Edo man hmm. who was killed because he got tired, he could not move fast. So they had to shoot him, left him there. You know, so this is the thing. Banditry in Kogi now, even in some parts of Okunland, the Gbede area, bandits are, are now kidnapping people. They want to set up a base. And I hope the governor of Kogi is, is listening to me because I can provide facts. They want to set up a base in the forest in Gbede land Ooh. where they can constantly kidnap people. More, more people have been kidnapped. Ooh. So if Kogi prides itself as a state that is strong on security, the governor must realize that more and more people are being kidnapped than is actually reported. And they must be on top of the situation. Otherwise, mm. people will refuse to come home. Mm. For me now, if it is not absolutely necessary, absolutely. what am I going? What are, where, where am I going? 
was there. Somebody called me the other day, said, Jide, come and deliver a speech in the learning. I had to find an excuse to not go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because if Overland is not flying, I have to go by road. <laughs> that's, that's just the situation because when we have villagers, vigilantes killed, and um, there, was a, there was a time last this week that Daily Trust reported it that in a day, 126 deaths mm. were recorded. Yeah, mm. that would have was a boat, uh, boat mishap. But let me even uh, point this out. If we have a problem and we are tackling that problem, do you know that we, we can sit back and be hopeful that one day this problem will end? Mm. But the problem with us right now is that we are not even tackling our problem, the challenge of banditry, kidnapping yet. And now, let me, the CBN governor said something yesterday, I think on Tuesday, after their meeting, and I was like, am I hearing properly? The CBN governor actually begged bandits and kidnappers to come and collect loan from government. Uh -huh. That they should drop their guns, that they should just come and collect loan from their mm. anchor borrowers mm -hmm. and take to farming. And take to farming. They will not listen to that. Them. You know, it's you know how much they are oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I was just looking at that. He was being sincere because he was lab. He was, he was no, because also. Because he's the trigger he's for also inflation. A, now. He's also a this winner. Is he's a also saying that, you know, that the level of insecurity is so much that mm. there can be no development when there okay. is such insecurity. Mm. But then, do, where do you see people begging criminals? Mm. Mm. No, it's like we have given up that we can't defeat them. Up. You need to see a video yes. trending. Maybe on Sunday we'll show it. Of bandits, they were during marriage <laughs> inside the forest. Come wow. and see them dancing. I see bandits. People that we should have used uh, yeah. my 35 to waste oh, them. <laughs> that they are doing, they are doing, they are doing uh, marriage, dancing. They even brought huge wads of Naira notes. Mm. Ah. They've collected from ransom. That's Happy. how we have degenerated, though. Mm. Mm. All right. I want to thank you, Ola Bisi Deji Politile. Thank you for your contribution. And Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're waiting for Sunday. Yes. Sunday's um, episode. Join us um, 1 to 3 30. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say that the new chief of army staff is a historian like me. Oh, we registry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, well, congratulations. We want to congratulate <laughs> just Major that, General Just Farouk like Yaya. the NYC uh, Director General. Director General. Major General Farouk Yaya, congratulations. And we pray that you are successful in this uh, new um, assignment. And that's our package. Join us tomorrow for another interesting package of the program. I'm Ayaduri Uzubaku.